Today we're going to be taking a look inside the infamous Honda R18 engine to see what's inside and how it works. Now the R18 engines were found in 2006 and up Honda Civics. This is the 1.8 liter four cylinder engine. It's a naturally aspirated engine with only a single overhead camshaft and is driven off of a timing chain. Now Honda did have a big problem with these engines, especially the earlier models regarding the engine block. So we're going to tear this down to see how it works and also what causes the failure. Now taking a look at the backside of the engine, which the transmission we mounted on this side, we've got our EGR valve, our thermostat inlet and our water cooling inlet over here. The EGR valve here is going to take exhaust gases coming from the exhaust manifold which is integrated into the head here from behind here and then route it back around to the intake to get reburned for emission. Across the top of the engine here we do have a coil on plug ignition system with a plastic valve cover at the top here. Now at the back here we have the VTEC solenoid because this has iVTEC, not the real performance VTEC. You get your fuel rail over here where it's going to inject fuel directly into the ports so it's not direct injection. Then at the bottom of the block here we have our oil separator. Now I'm going to begin tear down by removing the valve cover. Just pop that cover off. Well this valve cover doesn't even have a baffle for the oil over here but it does have this giant baffle inside of here for the PCV outlet. Now taking a look at this engine you can see that we've got a single overhead camshaft. This is the timing chain over here and that runs right through the length of the engine over here. We're looking here at the exhaust side where you can see these rocker arms that are going to ride off of that single camshaft. Now if you look at the inside here you can see that there's actually three little rocker arms which are going to ride up against different cam profiles and those rocker arms are going to lead to the intake side for the IV tech system. Now also to note here these don't have hydraulic lifters which means that you're going to have to do a valve adjustment which is done by turning this nut over here. Here's a look at the top of the head from the intake side. You can see we do have two valves per cylinder and on this side you can see that there's only two rocker arms going to the exhaust side. There's no third option for the VTEC. I'm going to pop off all these tens holding this cover on here. And then I can lift off this plate here. And you can see a bunch of these little springs here popped out. So here you can see that third rocker for the iVTEC system. Right now VTEC is not engaged, there's no oil pressure, which means that these middle guys can float around freely while the outside guys are held in place by the valve spring. Over on the intake side, I'm going to remove the fuel rail. Next we're going to take a look at the uh, VTEC solenoid. There we are, there's the VTEC solenoid. It's basically a spool valve, it's got a little filter inside of here to filter out any contaminants floating in the oil and it's going to redirect the oil back into the camshaft over here so it can lock up these rocker arms. Alright, next up we're going to tackle this little cover here on the timing cover. Pop that off and that reveals the timing chain tensioner. Move these two 10 millimeter bolts here and that should relax the chain tensioner. Now before I can get this timing chain cover off, I need to remove the crank pulley as well as this accessory pulley and the water pump. I'm going to release this tensioner over here, which is this whole entire L-shaped piece that holds the accessory drive on. Freeze things up like that. There's actually an 8mm hex over here. Okay, I need a new battery. I'll get it with the breaker bar. All right, we got that bracket out of there for the tensioner. Okay, let's see if we can get this off. Okay, Hondas are notoriously tight, so I think I'm going to go to the bottom end, hold that and use the breaker bar. So meanwhile, let's work on the top. Now I like that they actually give you a little cover here. Now I got access to the cam bolt. All right, so since I can't really get the crank pulley off as easily without dropping the oil pan, I'm thinking I could maybe get the head off before I flip the engine over and work on it. So I've already loosened that bolt and the timing chain tensioner is out. So if I loosen all the head bolts, I'm going to see if I can try to skin this chain off. Head bolts are a 14 millimeter 12 point socket. Holy! Yeah, that's pretty tight for an aluminum engine. <laughs> this is one really tight Japanese Okay, need more leverage. All right, I got a pipe on there. All right, now that those head bolts have finally been cracked free, I'm gonna go ahead and zip them off with my impact. Now this timing cover actually bolts up to the head, so I'm gonna remove all the bolts that I can and maybe see if I can pry it slightly away so I can get that head out. I'm also gonna remove all the 10 millimeters holding the water pump on because we're gonna drop that next. Now with all the timing cover bolts loose, let's see if I can crack that free. Before I get the head off, I gotta remove this tube here which is connected to the EGR. A couple of 12s hold that onto the head. 
You can see that this unit here functions both as the EGR, where exhaust gases are coming out from this manifold here, as well as the coolant passage, where your thermostat connects to inside of here. So the coolant actually passes through the exhaust gas area and kind of cools it down as it goes by. Take that pipe out. So I thought I could lift up this head here, and it is loose all the way around. The only problem being that there is a timing chain tensioner inside of here, which is bolted to the head itself. So I can't lift the head out because that chain tensioner has to come with it too. So overall I do have to remove this timing cover which means I have to remove this crank bolt and in order to do that I got to hold the crankshaft so we're going to spin this engine over and start working on the bottom. Alright now I'm going to turn the engine over and probably make a mess. Use my oil filter removal tool here and see if I can remove this oil filter. So they got a purulator filter on there, so it's probably maintained by a shop or something using cheap parts. The oil filter housing is located right on the bottom with the drain plug just over here. Now over here on the side of the engine, we've got this AC compressor bracket, alternator bracket, and exhaust manifold mount. So I'm going to remove all these accessories so we can get access to the oil pan. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove all the 10 millimeter bolts that go around this lower oil pan. There's a two-piece oil pan here. You've got the upper oil pan over here and then the block itself. All right, now I can lift off this oil pan here. Now I'm going to remove this plastic oil pickup tube. And over here we have this metal splash guard. So underneath this oil pan you can see we've got a typical four cylinder arrangement here with the two pistons in the middle in time and the two outer pistons in time. There's no balance shafts or any other assembly over here. The oil pump is actually integrated down inside of here into the timing case cover. Now before I loosen up the bottom end here I need to get this crank bolt loose. So I got my breaker bar on there. And I've got this stick inside of here. Hopefully I can break this loose. I got me an extension bar. Dang, yo, these Hondas are so tight. All right, so I've got a wedge under my gate here. I'm gonna try to push this bar down so it doesn't tip over. Ah! Finally got something. All right, now I can pull off this pulley. Okay, and I can pull off the timing cover. This is just one big cast aluminum piece. Now taking a look at the timing chain setup on this engine, it's so simple, especially if you compare it to say that Audi that I took apart last time. There's a single overhead camshaft driven off of a crankshaft and the timing chain tensioner would plug in over here. And that's pretty much it. There's no variable valve timing. There's no extra pulleys for like your water pump. There's not even a chain tensioner, idler, nothing. It's just a crank driving a camshaft and that's what makes these engines so simple. This is a very disconnected the cam from the head. I can just peel off that chain. All right, now over here I have a hex that I need to remove. They are made of plastic though. All right, now I got these 10 millimeters that I can take off for the other slide. And then I can remove this plastic slide. I'm gonna remove these 12.10 millimeter connecting rod bolts so that we can free the connecting rod caps. And the rod bearings look brand new, look at that. The bearing is here. The bearing looks brand new. Next up I'm going to remove these main bearing bolts here. They also hold this upper oil pan which holds your main bearings. There's also a bunch of 12 millimeter bolts that go around here that hold it to the block. Alright, not as hard as the crank bolt was. Alrighty, this is your upper oil pan. And here we see the main bearings. Wow, these are so clean. Okay, I'm going to pull out the crankshaft here. Check out these main bearings. They're so clean. This is probably one of the cleanest that I've taken apart from an engine. Probably was the original. Probably a really low mileage or a recent rebuild of an engine. Now, taking a look down inside of the block, you can see that we have these sprayers that are going to line the cylinder walls with oil. So now that all the bottom end has been taken apart, we're going to flip this back over and take that head off. Now, as I mentioned before, this engine does have VTEC, and that's why you've got this extra cam in between here, which are going to lock these to a certain profile in the middle of this camshaft. Now, since we've already removed all these bolts, we can go ahead and lift off this assembly here. Now, taking a look at the camshaft down the middle here, you can see that there's five lobes for each set of the cylinders, and that's because there's four valves, and the fifth one is for the VTEC. You can see it's got a slightly higher profile over here compared to the other two, and those are going to lock together in order to feed more air to these valves here, during the intake stroke. Now this is more of an economy version of VTEC where you've got your two lobes for the intake that are normal profiles up until about 3500 RPM. Then when VTEC kicks in, that pin in the rocker arm is going to lock these two cam profile rocker arms that adjust your intake stroke over here to this higher profile, which is not that much higher, but it does have a longer duration over here to give you more power. Now the disadvantage to having just a single overhead camshaft is of course you can vary your cam phasing with variable valve timing the way say the K24 engine does. If you want to check out more on how the K24 works, click the link above. Now around the back of the engine here you can see we've got our water inlet with our coolant temperature sensor. Now we've got another outlet here that's going to go to the heater core. 
and you can see the coolant temperature sensor down inside of there and here's the other water outlet for some reason this one uses pointy screws now this here is where your camshaft sensor is located uh, it only needs one camshaft sensor because there's no variable cam phasing as a matter of fact it doesn't really need a camshaft sensor because the crankshaft sensor is just spinning twice the speed as the camshaft and there's no timing difference between the two but it can definitely use this in order to improve emissions and make sure there's no timing issues to throw that check engine code if you've got a timing related issue all right now i can pull the head off of the block and here we have the head gaskets. It's a multi-layer steel gasket. Now I can reach in from underneath and pop these pistons out. Yeah, these pistons look pretty rough. A lot of carbon on top and the oil control rings are completely clogged up. And if I peel off this little cover here, inside of here, this maze contraption which is your oil separator it's basically going to function part of the pcv system the oil is going to get trapped and fall back down in this little labyrinth here whereas the vapor is going to get ventilated back into the valve cover so here we've got the entire r18 engine taken apart here we're going to take a closer look at some of these components and starting here with the oil pan you can see we've got a fairly deep oil pan here that's made of a cast aluminum pretty straightforward though it's got two ports here that's going to feed the oil filter located at the bottom here now sitting inside that oil pan is your oil pickup tube now it is made of plastic however I do see a small screen inside of here that's meant to filter out any large particles that made it down to the pan. And next up we have our upper oil pan. Now it's got the oil galley over here that's going to be collecting all that oil from the oil pickup tube. Then over on this side we've got our feeds that are going to come from the block which are going to feed it down to the oil filter on the oil pan. And flipping it over this also forms sort of a ladder frame for the main bearings which the crankshaft is going to sit inside of here. And over here you've got your crank position sensor which is going to feed off the reluctor ring that spins on the crankshaft. Now through the block the oil pickup is going to bring oil over to the oil pump which is directly driven off of the crankshaft here on the timing cover. It's all integrated inside of one unit here. It's going to provide fluid flow directly related to the crankshaft and then send it out through this port here back into the block. Now taking a look at the crankshaft just a typical four cylinder crankshaft with your counterbalances on this side. Now this engine does not have a counterweight which means that you are going to be subjected to your typical four cylinder vibrations. Here you can see the reluctor ring which is going to be picked up by your crank position sensor. Here we come to the main part of the engine which is your engine block. You can see the oil galley from the pickup tube and oil filter is going to feed down inside to a main galley that runs along the length of the block here. And then we've got these holes here in your mains that are drilled down there to collect oil to lubricate your crankshaft. And we've also got these two holes here which are going to feed the sprayers to align the cylinder walls with oil. Now taking oil vapor from the bottom half of the engine is this PCV system which is going to bring that oily air through this labyrinth style design here in hopes of filtering out some of that oil and letting it drop back down to the oil pan while the air itself is actually going to be brought up over to the valve cover to be ventilated. Now some of that oil from the main galley over here is going to come across here and then back up to feed the head for your VTEC system and its engine lubrication. Some of it's also going to come across here to feed your hydraulic chain tensioner. Now here we come to the main problem with this engine, its cooling system. You can see that it's going to start here at your water pump inlet and feed coolant directly into your water jacket located around the piston. This is an open deck design. Now the main failure point on these were that the engine blocks used to crack due to a defect in the casting. And when they cracked it would be a slow hairline crack going along this way here and that's going to slowly start to leak coolant out. Now if you don't pay attention then you're going to end up leaking all your coolant out and overheating the engine, possibly warping the head or the gasket and then you're going to need a new engine. Of course this becomes a big issue because you got so many Honda Civics out there from about 2006 to 2008 were the ones that were affected that Honda's extended the warranty to about 10 years and these engines generally being reliable as they are do last longer than 10 years so if you do end up with an engine like this you might be prepared to pay for a new short block if you do have this engine cracking. Now you can see that the previous guy here has tried to weld this up in order to close this up but this doesn't really work out a lot of people try JB weld and all that but those are really only temporary patches it does eventually go back to leaking. Welding aluminum is not easy the real solution is just to replace the block itself or make sure it's always topped up on coolant as it drips out. Even welding this is not too easy. You will have to remove the catalytic converter which kind of swings in front of here in order to get proper access here. And you also have to make sure you're completely drained of any coolant because any contaminants getting into your adhesive or your weld is obviously going to mess this up. So it's not really recommended to do this kind of job. Although it is a better choice than if you've got a beater car than replacing the entire engine block. Now if you are looking for one of these Honda Civics with the R18 engine, make sure you look for one from 2009 and up because those were the ones that were less susceptible to the engine crack. Now moving on to the top here you can see we've got our oil feed which is going to feed oil to the head. Now these pistons were in a bit of a rough shape. I would say this engine probably burned a little bit of oil. You can see that the oil control ring inside of here is gummed up with a lot of carbon inside of here and that's probably going to cause the oil 
to pass those rings and go back into the combustion chamber. And that's why you have so much carbon build up in here because it's just burning oil instead of returning it back through the little holes in here. Now we've already talked about the top of this head here with the VTEC system. So we're just gonna flip this over and take a look. And here you can really see the benefit of having port injection. Look how clean the back of those valves are. And that's because of this gasoline stream here that's coming in from your port injectors cleaning the back of those valves. If you had direct injection only, it would be gummed up with a lot of carbon and then you'd have to periodically clean that out. Now the bottom of this head here looks pretty clean. Here you can see we've got our exhaust valves and the intake valves over here. Nothing looks too gummed up or anything. Pretty straightforward, although there is a lot of crap inside of the cooling system. I wonder if they use some of that stop leak of coolant stuff and that's what's gumming this thing up and that's an in-depth look inside of the honda r18 engine this is definitely the engine you want to skip by if you're looking for an old beater car like an old honda civic probably get one that's newer that doesn't have this cracked engine problem now make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one